Rock Marciano is a legend. More than any other artist, he is credited for being the godfather of the current underground movement in hip hop. Those that know Rock Marciano know him as being one of the greatest hip hop artists alive. He's able to lyrically paint vivid tales that range from chronicles of crime to a lavish life of luxury in the smoothest way possible. His 2010 album Marsberg is considered patient zero for the current wave of grimy, drumless hip hop that has become the norm in 2022. But his story goes way back farther than 2010, as Rock paid his dues for a long, long time, patiently waiting for his turn to make a mark on the culture. The man who broke generational curses with his cursive grew up on 100 Terrace in Hempstead, Long Island, which is one of the toughest blocks in America. Rock started rapping in the late 90s, and his immediate skill set had him rolling with greatness early on. He went to school with a family member of Busta Rhymes, who introduced the two legends. Busta took Rock under his wing, and became something of a big brother to Rock in the game, showing him a lot of the ins and outs of the music industry. The earliest Rock Marcy song that I've come across is a legendary track from 1996 called Modern Day Gangsters. On this track, Rock, Busta Rhymes, and Notorious B.I.G. rap over a slum village era J. Dilla beat. It really is bizarre hearing four artists, who all mastered hip hop in their own lanes, collide on a track like this. Definitely check this one out if you haven't already. By the turn of the century, Rock was a full-fledged member of Busta's Flip Mode Squad, even if that group affiliation was short-lived. He was featured on Busta's 2000 album Anarchy, on a song called The Heist. The song featured Rock and Busta, along with Raekwon and Ghostface Killa from the Wu-Tang Clan, two legends who were huge inspirations for the sound that Rock would go on to perfect later on. Rock knew that this track wasn't quite his preferred style, but as the first time that the masses would be hearing him rap, he knew that he had to bring his A-game. He held his own with three of the greatest rappers of all time, so it's no surprise the heights that he would go on to reach later on. He remained close to Busta for the remainder of his career, but left Flip Mode in 2001, because he was working with a group of his own, called the UN. I might butcher these names, but the UN featured Dino Brave, Laku, and Mike Rawl. The group worked with Pete Rock and Large Professor, and ended up releasing an album titled You In or You Out on Carson Daly's 456 Entertainment back in 2004. Rock never made music as a part of a group after this, but this project did pave the way for him to be one of the best collaborators in the underground, always knowing how to bring out the best in his cohorts. From 2004 to 2010, Rock puts music on the back burner for a little bit, and went back to his street life. He featured on a couple projects over this time, most notably the Wu-Tang Clan's 2005 Think Differently, but for the most part, he was gone, looking like another rapper who would just get lost in the shuffle, spat out by the game after it didn't quite work out like they thought. But that is not the end of Rock Marciano's story. In fact, it was only the beginning. On May 4th, 2010, Rock Marciano released his debut album Marsberg under Fat Beats Records. The entire project is produced by Rock himself, and the record marks a landmark shift in the trajectory of New York hip hop. Around the turn of the decade, New York hip hop was going through a bit of an identity crisis, sounding more like areas such as Houston or Atlanta than the true birthplace of the culture that it was. Rock was able to make music akin to what he was missing from the golden era, but infused it with his own brand of confidence and swagger both from the rapping and production standpoint. This album marked a momentous shift in the sound of the genre. I have heard Rock called the Rock Kim of the underground, because similar to Rock Kim, you can clearly hear the difference between something made before Rock Kim or Rock Marcy came out, compared to something after, because every single thing that was released after this project was influenced by it, whether directly or indirectly. On the production end of things, this album ushered in the era of drumless beats, the sound that is now running the game with Griselda, The Alchemist, and many more. And all of these modern artists give credit to Marsberg for starting it all. And from a rapping standpoint, Rock is just as good, if not better than he is as a producer. His flow and rhyme scheme is as intricate as MF Doom, except he brings that intricity to the street level, to infiltrate a subgenre of rap that was in a bit of a lyrical dark age at the time. In 2012, he released his follow-up, called Reloaded. This album is often thought of as even better than Marsberg. On this project, he gets production from himself, along with The Alchemist, Ray West, The Druids, and even Q-Tip, who is a longtime friend of Rock's, and often helps him put some finishing touches on his albums. This is Rock's favorite project of his own, and you can see why. It has the rawness of Marsberg, 
blazing trails over never been touched ground. But lyrically, he's stronger and more confident as a writer and overall as an MC. This project also has features from Knowledge the Pirate as well as Ka, two of his most frequent collaborators over the years. Ka and Rock seem to be cut from the same cloth, both having similar understated deliveries and each perfecting the art of lyricism in their own ways. The two have been teasing a collaboration album called Metal Clergy for almost a decade now, so hopefully we'll get to hear that someday. In 2013, he followed up that project with Marcy Bio Coop. He produced this project entirely by himself, and he has a large number of features present here. To me, this album is him fully lending out his talents to the world, showing that his production doesn't only go with the laid-back deliveries of rock and ka, but it's for all of the underground to rock over. The project features Blue, Action Bronson, Cormega, Evidence, Quelle Chris, and more, and this is just a small taste of the incredible collaborations that he has coming. In 2013, he released the mixtape The Pimpire Strikes Back, but it was a four year long wait before he returned with another full length album. Rosebud's Revenge came out in February of 2017, and it's one of the best projects of his career. The album is inspired by Rosebud, who narrated the documentary American Pimp. Rock has really embraced this pimp side of his persona over the years, and it's become a huge part of his brand. Throughout his whole career, he has lyrics laced with pimp tales and quotables and weaved throughout his wordplay and storytelling is one of the richest senses of humor that the rap game has ever seen. He's able to use his vivid writing style to create comedic scenes of genius. Just something as simple as describing a head leaking like Egg Florentine, or saying that he has bowling balls for balls, you really never know what this guy's gonna say, and he's able to contrast it with some of the stone coldest mob boss bars ever, and it's a seamless transition. The same man who said, after the gank, your old lady engage in hanky pank, I'm in her pussy doing the stanky leg, also said, they mourn when you passed on, I yawned, and then moved the glass pawn. And also, ain't no L's on my jacket, the Mac 11 hit your melon and crack it, ain't no pads for that in the medicine cabinet, can't mess with whatever's in the gelatin tablet, 10 metal fragments can flip your skeleton backwards, all you seen after that was blackness. His lyrics are crafted with so much care, Every word and every syllable plays off each other like poetry. Rock Marciano is one of those artists that I would be able to just stand here and quote line after line from, and it'll never get old. But I'll leave that up for you guys to dive into on your own time. 2018 was a huge year for Rock. He released three projects, Rosebud's Revenge 2, The Bitter Dose, Behold the Dark Horse, and Chaos with DJ Muggs. The incredible thing about Rock's career is that he's so consistent. Every single project that he's released throughout his career reaches a bar of quality that most rappers only dream of reaching at their best, but Rock never stumbles. His momentous 2018 gave us three of the best albums of the year, my favorite of the three being Chaos with DJ Muggs. This was the first project that he made entirely with a producer other than himself, and that gave him the range to really explore and reach his best within Muggs' sound. The album finds Rock experimenting with trap production and delivery on Caught a Lick, but it also has some of the best classic sounding rock, with possibly my favorite song of his career, called Shit I'm On, where Rock spits this flow that sounds like melted butter. He's mastered smoothness in a way that no one has done since Slick Rick. In 2019, he released Marcia Lago, which further cemented himself as having one of the greatest discographies of all time. The project has some of my favorite rock songs of all time, like Molly Ringwald, Richard Gere, and God Loves You. In 2020, he started a new era of his career, when he produced Reasonable Drought for Stove God Cooks. Rock had been producing since the 90s, but at this point he decided to put his beats fully on display, to slide over and let the new generation take over on his beats, providing the soundtrack to the next generation of great rappers. Reasonable Drought is a masterpiece, with Stove God's unique energy on the mic, and Rock's flawless beats that sound like the soundtrack to the greatest movie that was never made. This album is going to be praised for years to come, and in the two years since this project, he's produced an instrumental tape called Pimps for Metals, Delgado with Flea Lord, and Blame Kansas with TF and Me Fux. It seems like this new era has Rock moving into a role behind the boards, but don't get it twisted, he's far from done rocking the mic. In 2020, he released Mount Marcy. This album continues to raise the bar for rap veterans entering their fourth decade in the game. His consistency is unmatched, each year refining his pen and improving as a producer, to the point that he's now one of the best producers alive. On Mount Marcy, he roams around the kingdom that he created, on top of the mountain of his own making, 
looking back on a decade of his own design. And with this project, he's gotten cosigns from a number of NBA players, Jay-Z, and even Drake. So his influence is as far reaching as ever. And he's not done yet. Recently, Buzz has been building back up for an upcoming Rock Marcy album produced entirely by The Alchemist. This album has been a long time coming, and the duo has given us some of the best songs of the last decade together. So this has serious album of the year, and possibly even album of the decade potential. So I can't wait. Thank you for watching everybody. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite Rock Marciano album. It's really hard to choose because of how consistently great he is, so I'm really interested to see what you guys think. And while you're at it, drop your favorite Rock Marciano bars too. I love seeing those, so flood the comments with all your favorites. If you enjoyed this video and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is greatly appreciated. I try to put out a new underground hip hop related video every one to two weeks, so I have a lot more headed your way. And if you want to talk hip hop or anything, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I'm always posting about what music I'm listening to and I'm always down to connect. I'm making some big moves lately, so I got a lot planned for the channel for the remainder of the year, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.